Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Margaret Kiefer, Professional Development Specialist from Millville Public Schools. And I'm here to talk to you about something I'm incredibly passionate about, and that's um, the arts, integration, and enhancement in your classroom. So I just wanna talk a little bit about a couple exercises that you can do in your classroom um, that are quick and easy, and they're all about the arts and staging your classroom for deeper learning. So I've always thought the arts are transformative. They transform us through story, and these stories can be told in your classroom in every content area. These stories can enhance your curriculum. These stories can engage your students. These stories can transform your classroom, but most importantly, the stories um, of the arts set the stage for deeper learning. So I want to share with you just um, for a couple seconds um, where my story started. So you're about to see um, a disturbing picture. This is me 30 years ago at Millville High School playing Glinda the Good Witch um, in the production of Wizard of Oz. This is where my story with the arts started. So I had Mrs. Metcalf in ninth grade and she inspired me. And then in 10th grade, Jean Tubertini um, launched my illustrious but very short-lived drama career on the um, MHS stage. So um, that's what got me started. But I've always loved how the arts have influenced me. They transform my life and they can transform your classroom also. So you can find the stories found in art and music um, for deeper learning. So we all know about the 21st century learning skills, communication, collaboration, critical thinking and creativity. These are the these and the habits of mind are things that employers are looking for. And to be successful in our world, you need to be able to do these things. Teachers ask Beth and I all the time, like, how can we incorporate more communication or collaboration or even creativity into our classrooms? And how can we do it quickly and easily? Well, the arts, that's a great way to do it. Many of our elementary schools um, have already been doing this for a long time. And our high school and is starting to also do it through some of our arts workshops that we've done. So I just wanna take a few minutes to show you some really great um, things that you can do in your classroom to tell the stories of art and to stage your classroom for deeper learning. So all of us do warm-ups, whether it's a do now or something when the students walk in. We want our warm-ups to engage our students' mind, but really the premise of a warm-up is to get you ready to learn. So warm-ups should prime the mind for using prior knowledge or prime the mind with knowledge or something a lot of people don't think about is priming the mind for the type of knowledge it's going to receive. So one of the habits of mind is flexible thinking, and it's something that students don't do on a regular basis. And to be able to do that, students need to think out of the box. They need to look for details. They need to be able to think flexibly. They need to be able to make connections. And that's where the arts come in. So to have an art um, in your warm-up is great because it prepares your students for that type of thinking. They'll be able to make more detailed connections and also have a lot of fun. So here's one of my favorites. I've been sharing this with so many people at our workshops. It's a warm-up exercise from drama called One Word Story. And basically what you do is you give your students a topic and then they create a story. So here are some of the stars of the upcoming Les Mis at um, Millville Senior High School demonstrating how to do a one word story. Now we did it fun, we did one and I just said, let's do a one word story about Wawa. And they did theirs for about 30 seconds. So here you go. And then I'll tell you how you can use it in your content area. So you can see they had a lot of fun with that one. Um, and that's one that didn't have much to do with content area, but a one word story is a great way to do a warm up. So you can say, everybody get with a partner 
And I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Everyone's going to say one word after another and build a story of what you learned yesterday. The students actually have to really think about thinking. They have to use flexible thinking because they don't know what their partner's going to say, but they have to keep it within the content area. So you'll see students do a little dance or struggle to come up with the next word. And you'll also see them compete with each other to try to throw each other off. But the result is this fun, engaging way for them to do a warm up. It's also a great closure at the end of the day to have them tell a one word story about what they learned. Um, and last but not least, we've all had those times where our students are starting to drift in the middle of what we're doing. This is something that you can have them stand up. It takes no prep whatsoever. And you can say, let's do a one word story about what we just talked about. Um, we've used this in all grade levels except for kindergarten, um, and they've had a great time. So we're going to take a second because um, the slide does not want to advance. Let's see. All right, we're almost there. Um, and I'm going to show you another one that you can do. So another one that we're going to talk about is something that some of you have come to either the arts workshops or I've talked to you because it's one of my favorite warm-ups. And it's um, Notice and Wonder, but this one has a little twist. So this one is called See, Think, and Wonder. Um, this is a picture from the Smithsonian Arts Lab. Um, Smithsonian Learning Lab, where you can find over 10 million artifacts, and I'm going to show you that in just a minute. And this is a picture um, that you would show your students. So students would walk in, and you would have this up on your board as the do now. So if the first thing that they do is they actually talk about what they see, and that is just factual observation. And if you take a look at this, there's a lot to see. The next is they look about, they look at the picture and they say, what does this make me think? So they pick a, an object out of the picture. They look at what they saw. They connect it to their learning or to something personal. So I might say, look at um, the barrel. What do we think about that? Just to get them started on thinking. Um, you'd be amazed what students come up with. When I did this the other day with a group of teachers um, at our project-based learning workshop, they pointed out things I didn't even think about. And that's the power of one of these um, warm-ups. Students will come up with things that you have not thought about at all. And again, it's flexible thinking, it's creativity, it's creative thinking, and they get to make connections. The next step is the wonder. Then they start to ask, ask questions. I wonder when this is taking place. I wonder if this is the artist thinking about the future. Or maybe a student might say, I wonder why that fish looks like a rat. Or, or maybe, why is the city underwater? And then they develop their inquiry um, ideas and they're able to ask questions. So that's the I see, I think, and I wonder. Um, and that's under creating a culture of thinking um, at the Smithsonian Learning Lab. So um, you can go to the Smithsonian Learning Lab and basically it's all free at the Smithsonian Learning Lab. So here's just their initial website. Um, and it says discover, create and share. All you have to do is log in and create an account and it's all free. There are millions of artifacts from the Smithsonian, all the art, they even have 3D renderings, they have lesson plans. Um, and if you want to know more, you can contact me about the Smithsonian Learning Lab. But you can use them for arts warm-ups um, in all content areas. Um, we, type, we typed in chemistry and things popped up. But the picture that I just showed you, they also have a lesson plan that goes with that picture. And that picture, the lesson plan they put with it, was for ecology in 11th and 12th grade. So there's a lot you can do with this. It's a quick warm up that gets your kids thinking flexibly and ready to learn. Another way that you can tell a story and set your stage for deeper learning in your classroom is by using clay. Now, clay we think of, or Play-Doh we think of is just for kids. But as you can see, our teachers at a workshop are having a lot of fun. And this group of teachers, it's a group of music teachers. 
and they're representing notes with clay. So you can teach of almost anything. And they decided that they were going to use the clay to teach um, rhythm um, when they have to teach rhythm dictation and piano. But I've seen teachers use clay in, in a, a variety of ways. One of my favorites is to just as a warm up, have students craft something out of the clay or out of the Play-Doh and then do a quick gallery walk and have students look. Then pair students up to discuss what they thought the clay represented. For students who are very hands-on, this is a great way for them to share. They may never share out with you in a larger setting, but they'll share about their personal piece of clay. And I'm not an artist. And even when I share the clay, because I try to make something, I have to think about it. It's metacognition. We're thinking about thinking. How am I gonna get this clay to represent what I want it to? And that's a powerful tool for students to think about thinking. So the students will craft clay into um, maybe a number set or a shape or a character. And if you want an easy way to start it, have them craft clay in a way of something that they love. And then they'll just do that. You'll have let them share out. And when we shared out at a workshop with clay, we learned things about teachers that we had never learned before because they shared um, their story through clay. So in conclusion, this is just a really, really quick way to use arts in your classroom. And what story will be staged in your classroom? You can use paint to talk about poetry or deep subjects. Um, you can use the arts for social emotional learning by creating masks. And we even had teachers in another workshop teach math through music. I'm passionate about the arts and I started my journey right here at MSHS over 30 years ago. And I'm still passionate and I'm still learning about arts and how they can be integrated into your classroom. Please let me know if you would like any more information about how to use arts in your classrooms. And a lot of you in your elementary schools have arts infusion specialists, so reach out to them. I thank you, and if you want any more information, um, just feel free to contact Beth or I, and don't forget to stage your classroom for deeper learning.